Sorry, guys. How are you? And as promised, here he is. <laughs> Have fun. Sorry, this, this two hour drive got me a few minutes late. I apologize. Very crowd, very tardy of you. I know, right? <laughs> I gotta get my, uh, my 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 act together. All right, so let's get started. Hello, uh, Colette, Kate, Carol, Leah, Karen, Jagger, Renee. Hello, uh, Renee. You're the only one. I made a request. If um, I always uh, if you can put your video on, that'll be wonderful. If you can't, I understand. Okay. Um, can you just give me, I'll put it on in a couple of minutes. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. How's everyone doing? Has anyone uh, taken a chance to read the book so far? Looking at Kate. Yeah. Did you say read the book? Yeah, we were talking about the, uh, the John Maxwell book that we were discussing. Yes. No, I did watch the last two classes, though, so I'm a little caught up, but that's as far as we got. That's great. Okay, well, we'll continue today. So this is the book that we've been talking about. We are on the section today. So we took a little bit of a break in between. Is my voice echoing? Yes. Yes. A bit, yeah. I'm just going to log out and log Jigar, I'm gonna make you the host while I go out. Okay. Is this better? Same thing. Same echo, right? I'm not hearing any echo now. Okay, perfect. Okay, all right, let's go. All right, so let's get started. This is what we were doing last time. So I'll recap real quick without taking too much time of what we were discussing. So a couple of things that we started with. There was a secret of your success. Actually, a Ava, are you muted as well? Yeah, I'm new. I just, I, I missed your first two classes. Okay, uh, let's see if everybody can be muted. Maybe there's an echo from their side. Um, Gaurav, yes. you Hi. can already unmute it. Hi, uh, this is Kim, uh, the virtual assistant. Um, you can already unmute it. Uh, I already made you the host. Okay, so oh, I, can you make me the host? Went, actually, it went to Jigar Patel. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll... I assigned it to him when I was leaving, sorry. Yeah. Well, then let me just check. If I can reclaim the host. Okay. I made you the host again. Perfect. All right, perfect. All right, so um, starting from last time, I'm just gonna read through, get us back on track, and then let's talk about the next section, which is thinking. The secret of your success is determined by your daily agenda. You will never change your life until you change something you do daily. Success doesn't just suddenly occur one day in someone's life. Neither does failure, each is a process. Every day of your life is merely preparation for the next. What you become is the result of what you do today. You're preparing for something. The question is, are you preparing for success or failure? So your actions today together over a period of time is going to define the future together. It can be part of, if, if, you, are, if you are working to, if you're not working towards growth, uh, have you heard the phrase that if you're not winning, you're losing so slowly that you think you're winning? So it's the same concept here. You think you may be winning or you're staying stagnant, but you might actually be losing slowly because the world is going way further ahead and where the path are using to be. 
You can pay now and play later, or you can play now and pay later. Choice is yours. Either way, you're going to pay. We all have to. There's no shortcut to success. So I'll skip this one. I want to get back to uh, the new topic and not just stick uh, with the previous topic. So, in, in, and we're also talking about health. If you don't make time for your wellness, you will be forced to make time for your illness. Unfortunately, it's so true. I'll take good care of myself by exercising and eating right. We all know that's a phrase that we have heard and used many a times. And if it's simple and so true, then why don't we all do it? Have a purpose worth living for. When you're living for something, it makes you desire a long life. And it also helps you to see the importance of the steps along the way. It is hard to find motivation in the moments when there is no hope for the future. So that's what a lot of people do that. Unfortunately, you know, you have to be in the right mindset to think about the growth in the future. And if and many people will start thinking about the positivity or the growth or the change they want in their, in their lives when they're down. And when you're down, you basically are thinking not in the, the, the clearest mindset. And that's what it's talking about. It's very hard to find motivation in the moments when there's no hope for the future. So use the moments when you're at the high to think about growth. When you're happy, when you have achieved success, when it's a great closing you just had, when it's a great run you had, when you're feeling great about your health, when you're great, feeling great in the moment with your family, friends, mindset, whatever it might be, when you're the high in your mindset is when you think about the future growth. Not when you're sad and upset and thinking about what am I going to do with my life? How is this career going to make, make, uh, make way for me in the future? That is, you're probably going to talk to yourself into uh, something bad than instead of being something good. Do what you enjoy. The problem with the rat race, we've discussed it last week, not rate race, rat race, is that even if you win, you're still a rat. So don't get caught in the rat race. Think about what you want in your life. Do what you enjoy. Because if you enjoy something, you will actually work towards doing it more often without other people asking you to do it. Two major frustrations contribute to stress. The first is doing work you don't think is important. I don't want to do the paperwork. I don't want to do the admin work. I don't want to do prospecting. I don't want to be networking, whatever it might be in your business. If you think that what you're doing is not important, you should be actually doing closings. You will not understand the value. What if it's, you know, the, the, every step of the way is part of a big goal. You know, if, if you take a small piece out of the picture, the whole thing falls apart. So you have to understand that every step of the way that you're doing is extremely important. But people, people have different thoughts about it and that's why that's absolute frustration. And doing jobs that keeps them in an area of weakness. But then while we're doing it, think about another example. If I know I am good in rentals or I'm good in investment properties or I'm good in residential properties, luxury, um, uh, a single family, new construction, what a certain area, center city, outside, whatever it might be. If I know I'm not good with numbers and, I, and I'm absolutely not having fun doing commercial properties for investments, and that's what I'm going to continue doing it for long term, that's the area of weakness where I could be excelling in residential sales or doing rentals. So people get stuck in the area of weakness because then they try to keep getting themselves, trying to do better and better, but it adds to frustration in the long process. So do what you enjoy and you need to figure that out, what that is. Find your pace. If I had known I was going to live this long, I would have taken better care of myself. In our industry, what I really think about this is, if I would have known prospecting was gonna make me so much money, I should have started this long time ago. If I knew CRM is gonna be helpful for me to make a million dollars, I should have done this 10 years ago. If I knew first-time home buyers were rentals last, renters last year, I would have talked to renters a long time ago. If we know those obvious answers, why aren't we doing something about them today? Eat right. The only way to keep your health is to eat what you don't want, drink what you don't like, and do what you rather not by Mark Twain. Same thing in real estate. The only way to be successful is to doing what you don't want to do. What's the one thing that people don't want to do? prospecting. What do they want to do? Follow up. 
What don't they want to do? A CRM, a database. What don't they want to do? Understanding 1031 exchanges because they don't really need it right now. So doing things that you need to do, but you don't like, is what is going to be the key feature of, of, of making you different than the other people. One of the tough things about exercising is that the immediate payoff seems so small. You may not see the result the first four days of exercising, but your four days of discipline makes a progress you see on the fifth day possible. You don't work out the fourth, first four days, fifth day is impossible. The streak is broken. Same thing if you don't follow up or prospect or cultivate the relationships and you want immediate results in the first one week or two weeks or three weeks, you will realize that it's a long process. People buy properties in the first, in the average life cycle is about seven years or so. So people always want to, you know, have you seen those graphs with the uh, ups and downs? So a person starts thinking about real estate, buys a property at the top, and then the next time, by the time they buy the next property, we want to come in the last minute when they want to buy the property. But the, but the process really starts the next day after they buy the first property. So think about this one. You know, once you buy a car and you are you're shooting to buy a car and work so hard on getting it, and you save the money, you find the model, you got the car you wanted. But as soon as you sit in the car and you start driving, the next thing you think about is, I love all the great things, but I know what I want in my next car. I would love to get maybe um, air conditioned seats. Maybe I want to hire a horsepower. Maybe it's a different brand. We start thinking about, okay, I, I'm enjoying what I have today, but I'm going to start thinking what's my next car going to be. We start thinking about it, but we're still enjoying what we have. Same thing with the house. When people move in, they start realizing, I'm settled in, this is fantastic, but I think I needed a bigger space for my TV. Oh, my kids would have loved to have more of a backyard space because when they're throwing ball, it's too small. Or my drive to work is more with the traffic that I didn't want. Whatever it might be, people start thinking of the next cycle. You need to insert yourself at that moment, be part of the journey, and then be available for them to buy the next property. Not wait to come in the last minute when they give you a call 60 days before that I'm ready to buy the property. That, that some people work for that, others work for the relationship. Any questions so far? Any thoughts so far? Family, success meant having those closest to me love and respect me the most. Time is like oxygen. There's a minimum amount that's necessary for survival. It takes quantity as well as quality to develop warm and caring relationships. We got, we got uh, into very much detail about this section last time. We were talking about the gut feeling. If you, if, you feel, uh, doing, if you feel in your gut that you're doing the right thing and you're making your family proud, then continue doing what you're doing. Otherwise, change the ways and, and do things that really is going to make an impact for you and your family. We, we're all doing this not just to make money, but to make, our, to make a lifestyle, to, make, to create something for our families to enjoy as well. So next chapter, sorry, it took me 10 minutes to get to this point, but let's get started. Thinking, making the decision to practice and develop good thinking daily. All that, all that a man achieves or fails to achieve is the direct result of his thoughts. If you think you can do something, you'll find a way to do it. If you doubt yourself, you'll find a reason to make, make it not happen. I will think on things that will add value to myself and others. If that's your mantra, you, you keep saying it to yourself in every step of the way, I will think on things that will add value to myself and others. You know, actually, interesting, I'll, I'll tell you something, uh, how I felt today. I'm always very nervous. I'm always late, unfortunately. I try to be on time, but I'm uh, always running late. Uh, and today when we were driving and my wife was driving, we, I told her that, uh, you know, I'm teaching a class at three, so I have to be sure I get to this new place. And then I have to log into my laptop. I have to get a new Wi-Fi password and I have to, under the, the car, uh, we, we are on vacation actually starting today and I didn't want to cancel the class. So I want to make sure I get here on time. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, over in, 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 the, in the course of driving, I realized I'm going to be either tight or I'm going to be late. So usual Gaurav will have freaked out, fought with his wife, upset, you know, said some few things that, you know, you knew I was going to get late and blah, blah, blah. Today I thought to myself, I was like, how am I going to add any value by not 
thinking a solution, but to complain about the problem. So I thought to myself, I was like, Nikki, if you log in, I might be a few minutes late. If I get really late, I'll log in on my phone. I will find a solution. And at the worst case scenario, I will apologize for my delay, but nothing else that I can do today is going to make it better besides finding a solution. And it's such a simple thought, but I've always, always done the opposite. I've always found a way to blame someone that made me feel good about myself. It was my fault, but I never found a solution. So, you know, it's such a small thing, uh, but, I, but I thought, you know, it's, it's, when I was reading through this thinking concept, I was reading in my car, you know, just to make sure to refresh my memory. I thought, what if we did this on every aspect of the way? Every problem, every property, every client, every follow-up, if you just thought about a solution on how we can achieve the result that we want to achieve instead of trying to find a reason why we have not been able to achieve it. If you desire to make good thinking a daily part of your life, consider this. Understand that great thinking comes from good thinking. And we're going to expand that on a little bit more uh, later on. Understand that great thinking comes from good thinking. So uh, do you know this, uh, this uh, series called um, you know, DOS for Dummies, Excel for Dummies, this for Dummies series? Does anybody know how it came about? Any thoughts? Any guesses? So there's, there's a guy who went to a bookstore once. And, and asked the person, the librarian or the bookstore person behind the desk and said, do you guys have um, a book where I can learn DOS? Uh, and the guy says, you know, uh, like we have so many books. He's like, no, no, like something which is like so simple. It's like something like DOS for dummies. And, and there's a guy standing next to her and thought to himself, like, wow, like that's a great thought. Like it needs, doesn't have to explain DOS as if you're writing a code or you're going to be doing programming. It's something which should be easily read by people, by a common man. So that was the idea for dummies, right? Like the, it should be so, so easily spelled out that anybody can follow it. So the unknown consumer had a great idea, but it went nowhere. In the hands of a thinker, that good idea became a great idea. See the value in that one? The idea was, came from somebody else but they just didn't think about how to implement that for the best result. So the unknown consumer had a great idea, but it went nowhere. In the hands of a thinker, that good idea became a great idea. So then how do we become those thinkers? If you want to become a great thinker, you first need to become a good thinker. Before you become a good thinker, you need to become a thinker. In order to become a thinker, you need to be willing to first produce a bunch of mediocre and downright bad ideas. Only by practicing and developing your thinking daily will your ideas get better. So, people, so if you're thinking of an idea and you say, that's a really bad idea. Well, if you continue thinking of those bad ideas, at some point, the experience that you have gained by thinking those ideas and crossing out those ideas in your mind will help you build on it to get some better ideas. And those better ideas are gonna make you great ideas. That's when you start, start thinking with an experience and not just thinking on the spot for a solution. Your thinking ability is determined not by your desire to think, but by your past thinking. So you, if, you, if you have been, you know, that's why I think brainstorming, masterminding, it's so important. Because every time you are talking about an idea, you are actually making yourself better than yesterday. To become a good thinker, do more thinking. Once the ideas start flowing, they get better. Once they get better, they keep improving. Take any part of your life, anything. Yeah, um, walking, running, reading, practicing, piano, cycling, uh, singing, uh, dancing, um, real estate, uh, uh, public speaking, like think of anything in your life. Don't you get better by doing it more and more? So then what about real estate? If you're talking about real estate in our business, don't we think by doing more open houses, we'll get better doing open houses? 
if by doing more prospecting and more script practicing, we'll get better at those script practicing. But, but, but the challenge is, why do people shy away then? Why do people not get it that they have to practice more and more? And it's a simple concept. Oh, I don't know how these people are so successful. I don't know how they do $20 million worth of transactions. So there's no secret sauce whatsoever. There's not a single person in this room or in our office or in the country, an agent who got into this business who, can, who, who should say that they cannot be one of the top agents. I am not in any way comparable to some of the big shots that have been doing way more transactions. But I do a lot more transactions with a lot of other people. I know Mike McKenna. I was talking about Mike McKenna. Mike McKenna is an awesome guy. Not the smartest kid on the block. He's, a, he's, a, he's the most consistent person I have known. I don't know anyone else who's going to outsmart you. They will outwork you. And because of them doing it again and again, the same items, they become better and better. So don't let anyone fool you by thinking they're smarter than you. No one is smarter than you. They may outwork you. So now the question becomes, are you willing to outwork yourself and outwork them? Or are you going to be stuck in your own mindset that you're not good or better than them? Any thoughts so far? I, I have a couple of more slides after as well. But I want to make it more interactive and I don't like go all the way through. So, so, so far, what do you guys think? What are your thoughts? Like a very simple concept, but I think we all stand in our own way a lot of times. Like I'll judge myself, like, like that's dumb. And instead of like, it, like what you're saying, like com complaining or blaming yourself or others, it doesn't get to the problem or it doesn't solve the problem any faster. So I think a lot of times we just get in our own way. Kid, you do a lot of amazing open houses. You do previews for the open houses. Thanks, Carl. Just because you may or may not get, I don't know, I don't know how the outcome of that have been. Just because they, in, I'm taking a bad scenario. Let's say nobody showed up to the open house. I'm sure there are people who showed up, but let's say nobody showed up. Do you stop doing it? How long will you continue doing it before you think that this idea is not working? And, and you might be on the verge of a breakthrough mm -hmm. and then we stop. So at what point do we stop and we cheat ourselves from the success we were so close in achieving? So that's the consistency that others are going to continue. And then at some point we will stop. And when we were ready to get it, we just gave it up because we were so caught up. Success needs to happen to us today. And, our, and we have to have those immediate results. Otherwise, this doesn't work. But if I start playing piano tomorrow morning by reading the notes and I don't know how to do it, and I think I practiced really hard for 10 hours and I still didn't get it and I gave up, who's at fault? My intelligence or my hard work or my consistency? There are, there are three-year-old kids who play piano, not on the first try. So why can I, why can I learn? I'm a pretty smart guy. I'm 40 plus. But why can I do it? Sure, I can. And the reason why, have you heard this other concept that why are there more people in the younger generation that break records than the older generation? Like why, is, why is there a faster runner, faster swimmer? Uh, wh wh why are there more records broken by the newer generation than the before one? Any thoughts? I'll say learning from the history, what are the achievements has happened and they just shoot for, you know, possibility is higher, you know, or certain standards already been achieved. Now it's a matter of can they break that record? And the consistent effort is, I think, the biggest driver overall. Yeah, 100% correct, Jigar. Thank you for saying that. It's, cons it's, it's like knowing somebody else has achieved it, so can I. Yeah. So they don't doubt themselves that I can achieve it. They know somebody else can, somebody else has, so can I. All I have to do is do plus one. 
if I can do just a tad better from them, that's what I'm achieving for. I just have to break that record. So how many people do you know who's doing $50 million worth of transactions? Take it less, $10 million worth of transactions, $5 million worth of transactions. A capital in our company is 3.3 million. That's literally at an average of $330,000 in our office, 10 transactions. One transaction a month and take two months off. That's a capper. How many, how many cappers? Less than 10%. So people can sell one property a month. So I, I, think, I think what people need to start looking at is not that 90% of people are not selling one property a month, is to see that 10% of people are able to do it and they're doing it consistently. So I need to learn from them to see what are they doing that I need to do to achieve the minimum what they're able to achieve and what is in my habits or in my day-to-day -day routine or my thought process that is not allowing me to achieve those results. And I need to work on them first. Recognize there are many types of thinkers. A big picture thinking, I'm gonna open a big organization, a focused thinking, creative thinking, strategic thinking, reflective thinking, questioning popular thinking, you know, uh, might be, oh, this is, this is how it's done. This can be done, this can be achieved. It's a very popular thinking. And if somebody comes and says, the earth is not flat. That's a very popular thinking at one point in our, in our history. Then somebody came and said, I'm gonna question you're the most popular thinking. Shared thinking, bottom line thinking, and many more. You have to think what kind are you? How do you what is your first reaction to any kind of thinking that you do? Are you, uh, and it, you know, these are all self-explanatory and, and I hope you get to read the book as well. Uh, we'll talk more about this. Or the book talks a lot more about this one. I don't want to get into too much details on explaining what these are, but it's pretty, pretty self-explanatory concepts. So you should, you should think about yourself and think, who, who am I? Who am I? And it could be one combination of two or three of them. It doesn't have to be just one. You could be very creative. You could be very strategic. And you could be thinking about the bottom line thinking of how does it going to impact my result at the end of the day? Some people will be, well, I'm creative and I'm going to be, uh, I would like to work uh, in, in, a, in, in a shared concept where I want to achieve a bigger result, but my goal is to just to make that happen. I don't really care about how does it really impact the bottom line or the end result. How is that going to be taken to the next level? Uh, I, have, I have some friends who have gone to professors who have done a lot of research in universities, and that's all they want to do. They want to be in the university, do the research. And I have a couple of friends who have taken those research and commercialized it in, in, all over the world. But those professors or those researchers had no desire of commercializing the technology. They just wanted to prove that technology, that, that, that research can be completed. It's two different, two different thought processes. One would never make the money, one would never be able to achieve the research. Or, or they'll make the money by, but not commercializing it unless they have a partner who's gonna help them commercialize. So managing the discipline of thinking. Every day, set aside a time to think and determine to think on the right things. So I have a coach and, he, and, and he's pushing me to do this thing and I have not been able to do that very well yet. Uh, and every time I, and I read something about this, it reminds me I need to do this. It's called white space. Do you guys know white space? Lee, have you heard about this concept white space? White space is basically a time when you're thinking for the future, not just reflecting on what has happened, uh, in how are you gonna run your day or looking at your calendar. White space is thinking about the future, strategic thinking way out there. So how am I gonna be number one? What is, how do I get to be where I want to be? Uh, it's, 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 a, it's a time when you don't think about anything else but pure growth. So every day set aside a time to think and determine, determine to think on the right things. Find a place to think. J.K. Rowling wrote her early books of Harry Potter while sitting in a cafe. Have you seen people like sitting in a cafe all day with their headsets on? 
there are people who read in, who will sit in a garden and they'll they'll, they'll read a book. There are people who, the, who who would be sitting on their rooftop or on the steps of the art museum. Like they have, and you'll find them again and again doing the same thing. It's because they find a spot where they can concentrate. And the out and the background noise just becomes some, you know, like just actually the noise pollution is because of background noise. They don't really affect, affect them as much. Because that's how they get in the zone of thinking. Set aside think time every day. Find a process that works for you, whatever that might be. Some people think when running. Some people will listen to podcasts. Uh, some people will write on a, on a piece of paper. Uh, some people will talk to friends. Some people just need their own alone time. They need to have a cup of coffee in their hands. Uh, there are people who are very specific. I need to have, I need to start thinking when the sun is going down, looking at the one side of the window with a cup of coffee in my hand and a glass of water in the other hand with my feet up on the window and that's my happy space. I have something crazy like that in my life. I, I, I like my spot and I like my feet up and I want to have a cup of coffee and it just allows me to think. But whatever that might be, you have to find that. Because each person needs to be able to reflect on what you have and think about the future yourself. There's nobody, I cannot, I cannot ever go to Colette and say, I would like to have, make you think and sit down with me and let's start thinking. It doesn't work that way. You have to find that spot in your life. And that's extremely important because without that, you're, you're that rat who's going to continue running, but it doesn't matter what the outcome is, you're still the rat. You don't want to get stuck in that rat race. You have to find a way to be the best that you have ever been or, or you can be. Capture your thoughts. If you don't write down your ideas, there's a great danger you will lose them. Do you guys all write your thoughts on paper? Hope you do. I do not. <laughs> I hope you do. So uh, I'll share something with you. This book has all my Gary Keller mastermind. This book is my coach mastermind, which is a new book. This book is all my meetings and all my lead generation. So I carry this book, on my, I brought this on my vacation today because I need to go back and look at them. I have some time now, but I have this on 3221. I spoke to Eric Lee regarding this property. This is his phone number. I talked to Michelle regarding Gorilla Warfare on 3221 at 10.04 a.m. How the heck am I gonna remember this ever again? On March 2nd, I spoke to this person about these things. I have detailed after detailed stuff that I need to go back and check. And then I'm gonna find things in there that's gonna make me think by looking back in time, which is gonna to add to my thought process and I'm gonna build up on it, on my thinking. But if I have to go and start scratching my head of thinking, what did I think, talk to Michelle, because it was a great concept about guerrilla warfare, I'm gonna waste my 30 minutes trying to remember what I spoke about. So if you're not writing it down, every conversation, every meeting, every thought process, you have to start writing it down. You don't, don't think you are an anomaly that you always remember. Whatever we're discussing today, I can guarantee you in about a year's time, you will not remember. You will not remember probably in a month. You'll probably not remember in a week. Even if you remembered it, if somebody repeated that to you, you would not be able to come up with by yourself to reflect on it and start building on it. Does that make sense? Put your thoughts into action quickly. When you have a great idea, but don't do anything with it, then you don't reap the advantage it brings. Every time a person puts an idea across, they find 10 people who thought about it before he did or you did, but they only thought about it. Ideas put into action gets an advantage. Wouldn't that be great? And look, if, I don't know if you guys are big fans of Shark Tank. I'm a big fan of Shark Tank. It's an awesome show. You know, what, what excites me about it is that 
uh, two components. Sitting on the shocks side, it's how you invest in and in, in businesses. And think being on the investor side or the uh, or the uh, person who's inventing things is how do they come up with the idea? Like it's a lovely story that each one of them has. How do you come up with the idea of this? How do you come up with the idea of that? You know, they made it at home. They saw the child running and fell and they built up a bandaid, but the child didn't like the bandaid, so they built this washable bandaid. Like genius. You think people didn't think about having a washable bandaid? You know, the, the, the worst one I've ever seen that makes me wonder is, do you, do you know that um, um, it's called the, uh, the, the stuff that you use to uh, wash dishes? It has like two eyes and a mouth. It's sort of a scratch, what is it called? Uh, not a scotch bright, but it's like a yellow thing that they made. Mr. Happy or something? You know what I'm talking about? No? Come on, Leah, help me out here. Um, it's like a scotch bright. It has two eyes and it's like a smiley face. You put your spoon through it and just like takes a scrub away. So yeah, it's one of the, it's one of the biggest selling products ever. Like Oh, you're talking about those clean and scrubs. I forget the name of them. It's like a smiley face on it. I think it's, yeah, it's yellow. It. It's yellow. Yeah. yeah. So you, you know you know what that, what that whole thing is? Scotch Bright has been in existence for decades. Somebody came and said, instead of me holding it and rubbing it on the spoon, if I put a smile in it and put a spoon inside, it scrubs by itself. Can you imagine the board of directors sitting in a room with the inventors of Scotch Pride and saying, geniuses, you can come up with that? And somebody went to Shark Tank and made millions? Simple ideas. But somebody put it in perspective and started working on it, and others didn't. So what the point is, there is great ways for you to be successful with new ideas don't think that all of those things have been taken away from you. Somebody has already invented every idea of being the best in real estate. You have the capacity of coming up with one better idea beyond <laughs> Mike McGinn. I'm just using Mike McGinn all the time because even if he hears this video, he knows how much respect I have for him and I, and I admire the guy. And he's, and, he's, and, he's, and he's the number one team in the city. Not for long because we are right. God is going to be continuing to look at him. And I, and I was joking around. I was like, Mike, all I got to do is follow exactly what you do, plus one. And he says, by the time I'll be plus three, I was like, I have to work three times harder to be three plus one. I said, I just know if you can break the records that it's achievable and I'm going to do better one day. And we have this joke going around between him and me all the time that he says, you know, I'm, not, I'm never stopping. He said, neither am I. So it's, it's fun. I like the motivation, uh, having something. But that doesn't mean that we can invent something better. So if, one, if, if a new idea comes by, that just changes the trajectory of someone's success. Facebook came up with a great idea. So does Amazon. But so did many other companies who didn't implement it but thought about it. Microsoft DOS wasn't invested, in, invented by Microsoft, invented by IBM. Bill Gates just bought the technology and made it and commercialized it. Try to improve your thinking every day. It's true that the more thinking you do, the better you become at it. You can quickly improve your thinking if you do the following on a daily basis. Focus on the positive. Thinking alone won't guarantee success. You need to think about the right things because you can also think about the bad things or negative things that can bring negative energy in your life. Negative thinking and worry hinder the thinking process rather than improve it. So when you're doing, when you're doing things yourself, you've got to make sure that you're the right, right path and not pushing yourself down. Gather good input. I found the more ideas I'm exposed to, the more thinking improves. Spend time with good thinkers. If you spend time with good thinkers, you will find that the exposure sharpens your thinking. It's called masterminding. Find like-minded people who know more than you so that you can learn from them as well. Have you heard the phrase serial entrepreneurs?
You know what serial entrepreneur means? Who's a serial entrepreneur? Call that in your mind. I would say probably Elon Musk is the person that comes to mind for me. Sure. Why, why do you think he's a, he's a serial entrepreneur? He's done Tesla. He's done SpaceX. Like he, he gets one idea, gets it off the ground, gets it going, and then he's, he's got something else in the works right away. How come people like him have ideas after ideas after ideas and others don't? I think his mind is always working. So Just is ours. So is ours. You're not thinking all the time? But not always about the right things. So I, or we are not willing to go all in trying to make it happen. If you, if you hear a YouTube video that uh, Elon Musk has uh, uh, on YouTube, I forget, it's a long time ago. Uh, he said, people always talk about my two or three or four success stories. He says, I went bankrupt with the other 40 business that didn't survive. Nobody wants to talk about that. You know, Elon Musk almost went bankrupt with Tesla. And now he's the richest guy in the, on the planet. Literally two years ago, he went bankrupt. There came a, there came a time when he, he didn't have money for anything else. And he went with all that he had back into the company because he believed in it. It went all, that's real all in. I don't, I don't know if I have things that I've gone all in, but the times when I have, I think they have all worked out. So it's also about our comfort level, the, 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 the risk they're willing to take. Who did I surround myself with? If you were talking to someone who said, dude, you're out of your mind, don't spend your remaining $40 million or $400 million into the, into the company to that take you to space. That makes no sense. And somebody else will say, Dude, you know, the 400 million would become $40 billion overnight if you achieved it. Are you willing to take the risk? It's about people that you surround yourself with who push you up and not bring you down. But obviously, we're talking about success stories. I'm sure he has the same friends who told him to invest in things that he lost enough money where we don't talk about those things. However, a serial entrepreneur will always find opportunities where they can make things better and commercialize it. So it's all about and take any, a serial entrepreneur, all he does is looks around opportunities to say, how can I make it better? Anything. How do I make it better? Book printing. How do I make it better? Telephones. How do I make it better? Water filtering. How do I make it better? A serial entrepreneur always thinks, how can I make things better? And, and acts on it. Many will take thinking for granted. They see it as a natural function of life that we think all the time. The truth is that intentional thinking isn't commonplace. Just thinking about everyday thinking is not intentional creative thinking. What you do every day in the area of thinking really matters because it sets the stage for all your actions. If I think tomorrow morning I'm going to work out and I'm consistent about doing it, then I'm going to set the positive in my mind that I need to eat healthier today and then I need to work out tomorrow morning. But it's a way that my mind is thinking today. If I surround myself with people who want to go out and have a pizza and beer every night and they don't care about health because they are 400 pounds, guess what my future looks like? It's going to be the same. So I have to make sure that I surround myself with good, positive thinkers in real estate or in your business the same way. Are you surrounding yourself with people who have done a lot more in their lives and careers to achieve success? Or you are surrounding yourself with those complainers who think, eh, we are, we are different other people. We don't do prospecting. This is really boring. I don't like doing open houses. I would be going to the beach every weekend. How am I supposed to do open houses when I have, when I have to go to the beach? But my parents are there. My friends are there. Last year, last month, my friend came over from a, count, from a different place, uh, traveling the city. I have to take them there. I bought a place there. What do you want me to not use my place because I paid so much money, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. What you do every day in the area of thinking really matters because it sets the stage for all your actions and it will bring either ad adversity or advantage. So you know how we were saying your daily actions will set you in line for future success or future failure. So recap, we talked in health, find your, find your pace, enjoy your work, 
eat right and exercise. Not every real estate company is going to teach you that. I think it's extremely important for us to talk about it. And we did that health really matters. You, you need to make money, but you don't want to be very rich in the, in, in the uh, you know, six feet under. Family, take time to develop warm and caring relationships. Extremely important. Thinking, make the decision to practice and develop good thinking daily. So that was the end of our presentation. So your th thoughts, guys, what do you think? I just need this class every day to remind myself to think positive. So I appreciate this. My pleasure, thank you. I cannot believe that everyone in the world is not watching this class. It's so motivational. It just always gets you exactly where you need to be. It's awesome. Thank you. Well, you're very nice. You make me feel good for spending the time with you guys. Karen, what do you think? I just wanted to say the yes, part that yeah. you talked about with, um, you know, just like the way of thinking and not that people are uh, smarter than you. They just outwork you. I think that that's definitely resonated with me because one of the things that I struggle with is um, thinking that I can't achieve certain things and mm -hmm. I'm not even really putting the effort in. I'm not really outworking myself, let alone anyone else. So that was um, a really good point. Great. I hope, Shania, you know the 10,000 rule, 10,000-hour uh, 10, rule. Uh, the 10,000-hour rule, uh, you know, talk about any, if you do anything for 10,000 hours, mm -hmm. you'll be an expert in that particular field no matter what it is. Mm -hmm. Standing on one leg for 10,000 hours will probably build your calves and core strength so strong, you're probably one of the best <laughs> one foot stander in the world. Like whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. The 10,000 is a synonym for extensive consistency you need to put in. So, so uh, mm -hmm. you can outwork anyone and achieve success, you don't have to do better than them. Because of, you know, this, uh, this is one thing I also think about all the time. When um, uh, Michael Phelps won those uh, Olympic uh, medals last, uh, last Olympics, he was, a, he, was a, he was a swimmer, mm -hmm. won the maximum number of Olympic gold medals uh, in the history uh, of mankind. And when they interviewed him, he said, mm -hmm. uh, and, he, and, and I think the last one he won was what, 130 seconds, one thirty-second of a second better than somebody else. And they mm -hmm. said, like, how do you feel? You could have been silver by one thirty-second of a second. And he said, when I practiced for the last four years, I knew that if I practiced every day with the same intensity and commitment, there will be somebody who will skip one day and they will allow me to win by one thirty-second of a second. He says, well, I just wanted to make sure that, that I achieve by doing what I needed to do, that if the time came in for one thirty second of a second, that I'm the one who actually achieves it. So it doesn't matter what, I never took a shortcut. I never got myself shortchanged on my commitment to getting the best. When we hear about things like these, these are regular human beings. Mm -hmm. They just committed at a much different level than most of us. So if we want to achieve similar greatness, we have to just commit to the same level. That's all there is. We are also gonna be talked about in history by somebody else who says, look at them. Mm -hmm. It's not gonna happen if we are not committed. So it's on us, not on anyone else to define our legacy and our future. Each one of us can achieve greatness in anything that we do or we want to do. So don't shortchange yourself, guys. Just don't short, don't, don't underestimate the power that you have as a human being. You need, you deserve it. You're, you're, you know, and I always took my parents and say, my parents did not put their lifelong earnings, blood, sweat into me to say when Gaurav is going to grow up, he's going to be a mediocre guy. They wanted the best from me. Mm -hmm. So am I, going to, am I going to cheat them? 
Or am I going to wake up in the morning and say, eh, pizza, pizza and beer sounds good today. I don't want to go to work today. It's raining. I don't want to do that showing. That's, that guy doesn't sound like he's going to buy anything. I don't call anybody else all the time. I call three people and they hung up on me. I'm done. This doesn't work. <laughs> Like whatever it yeah. might be, right? Or it might be, you know, I don't, I, I don't know who to call. I don't have a CRM. Like we have all the reasons that we know the solutions for, but instead of working on the solution, we find a reason not to do it. But the path mm-hmm. is so simple, it's just not easy. It takes time, energy, effort, and commitment. But it's an easy path. What is an easy you know, path? It, 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 I'm on vacation and I brought this with me today. Time to read, time to read this again. I probably can yeah. teach this book, but I'm trying to read it again. So, so if, you know, but, but, but am, am I going to just be on the beach all week and not read what I need to do? This is, this, is, this is what defines my legacy. Or a book like this doesn't have to be. I'm not, it's, not a, it's, not a, it's not something I have to coach you that you have to read this book, but something that teaches how to be a good agent I decided to be a realtor, but if I'm not going to read a book that talks about being a good realtor, then why am I a realtor? I need to be the best a realtor can be. And I do every single thing, not eight out of 10, not seven out of 10. I need to do 10 out of 10, plus an extra one that I need to find to be better than everybody else. So I need to find a way to do 11 out of 10 things. If I want to be the best, it's all about a commitment. Sorry, Karen, you were saying something and I went to a different path. Uh, I think Shanae was, was saying as well. What, what's your thought? Yes, what my thoughts were. But I agree, you know, with the others. It's so motivational. I could do this every day, definitely, you know. Um, and we'll try to, you know, do it for myself mentally. <laughs> um, I Maybe, you know, this, I've read it before. Uh, how many times does it take to create a habit when you do something? Is it three times or something like that that like starts to get it really in your... 66 days. 66 days? 66 days of consistency makes it a habit. All right. Hmm. Something to think about. Hmm. So if you if you're doing something and if you wanna if you wanna wake up at five o'clock in the morning every day and do something, or if you wanna do prospecting every day, or if you want to go for a run every day, if you wanna stop eating, drinking coffee, that takes sixty six days. I'm sure at sixtieth day, you're not gonna, you're not gonna be any less, and at sixty seventh day is not gonna be a guaranteed success, give or take about sixty six days. So, and it takes about six times to get in touch with a client. That's an average. Okay. People say, you know, how many people, how many times will say, you know, these were just bad leads that came in because I called him, texted him, emailed him. They have not responded back. That was one day, three times. It takes six tries on an average to get in touch with a client. So that, be consistent prospecting and follow-ups. So then, so, you know, there's another phrase called, there is no bad leads, it's only bad follow-ups. Four minutes left. Ava, how are you? Hi. I really like your speech. And um, I think most of us know the concepts, but it takes a lot of commitment to real take actions to it. And that's how make people different from each other. And uh, for the 60, 60 days, I also know that if you give up a habit, stop a habit for two days, it'll be really hard for you to pick it up. So consistency is really important. Absolutely. Surround yourself with other people who are going to help you be, you know, we call the, the other word we say, you know, your accountability partner. You know, somebody's going to hold you accountable. You have to have that. So you have to be you know, around people the day when you're not feeling well or, or, or in your mindset, I want to give up. Uh, I don't feel like doing this anymore. This is not working. What are the challenges that I'm having? What, what small tweaks can I make? You need to have that accountability partner. And, and that's why I think a conversation like this, 
is really important because we can look at each other and say, you know what, we, 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 all, like, we all feel the same. We all feel mm-hmm. that this is no different than, than what, if I was thinking by myself, sitting in a, in, in, a, in, a, in a lone room, sometimes I get lost. But talking about it, the simple same concepts allows me to get better and grow in my own career. So, you know, the word masterminding is sometimes very loosely used, but so important. And that's why when we say, take bold, take ignite, go to mega camp, do family reunion, and people say, nah, uh, oh, I, just, I, don't, I don't know how to do it. You know, it's a waste of money, waste of time. They, people, you know, no, it's not. No, it's not. I look forward, I look forward to those things because I know I'll find three more better ideas that'll help my thinking and will push me in the positive direction so I can continue getting better. I need, like in this particular class, we are talking to each other, but I'm doing most of the talking, trying to to explain some of the concepts that I have learned. But where am I learning from? I need to be, I need to hear from people who are, have been and done that so that I can get better. You don't want to be the smartest kid in the room and I, I, I know Kate is extremely smart. Leah is extremely smart. So, you know, being in this room excites me too because I know I'll get some ideas from each other. But then we all have different, you know, maybe Kate would go to Deirdre Quinn's class because she is a queen of open houses. You know, and maybe Ava might go to an investment class with Rodney and we push those people to do those classes because we know they're really good in what they do. So take advantage of all those things. And, and don't feel that this is a waste of time. If you walk out of the room with one new concept that makes you a tad little bit, little bit better than yesterday, you're on the right path of success. So next time, if, you have, if you're reading the book, I'm going to prepare for commitment, finances, and probably faith. And then the last one will be relationships, generosity, values, and growth. We'll have two more classes on this book and then we'll move to a new book. Hopefully, if you haven't read this book, please do. It's really, really interesting and simple. Um, and it's never, it's never boring. And they're coming out with the number, two, the, the upgrade, updated version. A lot has changed from the time this was written. If you want to maximize the second book, you got to read the first book. So your concepts are clear. So take out the time. If you invested, your, if you made a decision in your life that you want to be a realtor, uh, Spend some time reading a, one book. Uh, you know, if, if, if somebody told me how you know how do I win a lottery, the answer would be go buy one. You know, and how and how do you make a million dollars in a real estate business? Go be a good realtor. Can't be a realtor by sitting at home or not doing what you need to do without having the right concepts. So uh, it, it's it's not it's not that difficult. Uh, it's not as easy as so, but I do know it's simple. If I can do it, you everyone can do it. Any last thoughts? I like this book club. Okay, perfect. Well, I, I appreciate you guys. Thank you. And uh, my vacation starts now. Enjoy your vacation. Enjoy your vacation. Bye-bye. All right, guys. See ya. Bye. Thank you. Bye.